For more great content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Instead, it just comes out to this moment and oh, they've seen it! And it's still going to to come out with three! Ridiculous from Mixwell! That's just a little too much show. And Mixwell, this is the Mixwell you need to start seeing if you're a G2 fan. There he is. Sentinels have set a trap. They're waiting for G2 to run into middle. They feed right into Sentinel's hand, but nothing goes their way. Shot from Kellogg's land. They're not going to check the corner, and this just gives free roam for Mixwell. Oscar Mixwell Kenyeus is back at the top of Valorant. He is a Spanish esports icon, one of Europe's most talented Valorant players, and someone who's endured a roller coaster ride of a career. You see, when Valorant initially made its entry into esports in 2020, Mixwell was leading his region's first powerhouse organization to glory and dominance. They've been dominant across every single Ignition Series event. Finally, they have been tested. But you got to say, these guys, it doesn't matter if they're down completely. It doesn't even look like they're not looking like the same on their cameras. They're able to pull it through. They're able to pull it back. But as the scene developed, contenders to Mixwell's throne arose. And G2 Esports, well, they were knocked right off their pedestal. G2 have time now to work out all of their issues, but that means that the dominant team of 2020 won't be headed to Iceland or Reykjavik or even the MEA finals when it comes to the top teams in Europe. Yeah, another devastating blow to G2. Failing to qualify for first strike was just the start, not getting masters and then moving on to this stage and failing again. It was a story of brief greatness followed by a swift fall and one that Mixwell knew only too well a near mirror image of what had happened to him before Valorant in Counter-Strike. But in Valorant, things are different. They need to find the kill soon, find some space. Sick is taken down, it's all up to Dapper. He's going in for the stick, halfway at least, ready to take the fight up above, and Cold Dement is shut down. He's almost got it, oh! but they push at just the right moment. 13 to 11, G2 have won the series, and Sentinels are dethroned. At long last, G2, the Kings are back, and this is their town. Hey guys, this is uh, Oscar Cañellas. You know me as Mixwell. And I'm 23 years old. Was born in Spain in a town called Girona. Growing up in Spain, gaming ruled Mixwell's house. When I was younger, my older brother was the only one with a computer and he was always playing as well. He played for the Spanish national team in Day of Defeat. So uh, when I went back home, I only watched him play and he didn't let me play as much. Even his younger brother found a home in esports and went on to become a League of Legends pro. Having been exposed to the possibilities of pro gaming early on, a 12-year-old Mixwell, infatuated with Counter-Strike, began to pursue his own professional career. In just two years, he'd worked his way to the very top of the Spanish scene. In early 2016 at ESL Expo Barcelona, a 20-year-old Mixwell announced himself to the world as a player ready for the big leagues back in their favor to make it three versus three on entry on A. Meanwhile, but Mixwell is lurking. It's configs there, but oh. again, he had the MP7. Great shot again from Mixwell. It's gonna go to 14 rounds now for G-Bots in this game. Not come just yet, looks like it's too far ahead of ourselves, but very, very impressive stuff, I have to say, on this CT side. The hype was beginning to build around Mixwell as a potential star in the making, and it wouldn't be long before he was put to the test in the top tier of Counter-Strike competition. I don't know, we're gonna see. They just made they just made a team change. We brought in Mixwell, who is one of the best Spaniard uh, players. Uh, it's gonna be good. Mixwell hit the ground running, and Optic Gaming, although a little inconsistent, found success with a victory at the Americas Minor for ESL1 Cologne 2016. Optic badly underperformed at the Major itself. But by the end of 2016, they had secured one of North American Counter-Strike's first and greatest triumphs on an international stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Optic Gaming, the winners of E-League Season 2. 
What a story, what a surprise. Who would have seen that coming? I don't think there was even a single analyst, a single expert anywhere that saw Optic even making it to the grand final, let alone winning it. Winning the final versus a team of Astralis' caliber, and this is Optic's moment. A Cinderella story. While Optic's incredible upset win against the world's best was very much a team effort, Mixwell himself was a top performer throughout the event. It was an amazing experience, everyone was really happy. Uh, it was one of the best days of my life for sure. To an outsider looking in, this all might have seemed like the start of Mixwell's ascent to true superstar status in Counter-Strike. And yet, it turned out to be anything but. The fall of Mixwell. Stanislaw must succeed here, otherwise that's GG. Down he goes, and that's the end of the round. Optic are leaving the Major. Rush finally eliminated by Pronax. Optic Gaming, many would have pegged as by far the favorites here. They said they were slow to start. I don't think they ever started at all. In January of 2017, a month after Optic's E-League success, Mixwell had the opportunity to make a real run at Counter-Strike's most prestigious event, a Major. But the team's shocking 1-3 run and their early exit from the event marked the beginning of their demise. By July, the team had fallen outside the top 15 in the world, and shortly after underwent a four-man roster overhaul. Mixwell was the only member to keep his place on the team. I talked to my family about it. I was constantly telling them what was going on. They advised me to stay with Optic because Hector is a trustworthy person and he always did the best for me, and we both gained a lot from each other. With battle-hardened talents like Freiburg and Alu, the new European Optic looked to have all the ingredients to contend. And yet, the results never came. Within just four months of the lineup's debut, Mixwell's name was the first on the chopping block. This business is super, super tough sometimes, especially when you become attached to a player the way that I became attached to with, uh, with Oscar, you know? Uh, his competitive nature and his ability to be a true professional and, and bringing us a championship as he, as he did with, uh, with E-League Season 2, I think that really, you know, that really solidified his, his place in the Hall of Fame of Optic, uh, in my opinion. After being let go by the organization that kick-started his career on the international stage, Mixwell became a nomad between orgs. In the first half of 2018 alone, he played on an all-Spanish team, went on an unsuccessful trial with G2 Esports, and even enjoyed a rare moment of success at DreamHack Valencia as a stand-in for North. They're feeling good about this. They're going to be uh, relishing in the victory. Makes all the lift, of course. They're waiting for him. He wants to go ahead and high-five everyone over on the side of Luminosity. A sportsman as ever. The Spanish flag wrapped around him in front of his home crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, North are your DreamHack Open Valencia champions. On a personal level at least, Mixwell was glad to be back in Europe. As much as he was loyal to Optic, he often questioned his place in North America and struggled with homesickness. And I was talking with him at dinner and he said, yeah, there were, there were three times, three times in his, since joining Optic, where he was convinced he was gonna leave. You know, it, it wasn't working out. He, he missed his family and his friends too much, you know? So when he was offered the opportunity to spearhead his own hand-picked Spanish lineup with movie star writers, well, it was an offer he couldn't refuse. In an interview with Esports Haven, Mixwell admitted that this was a dream move for him. He was back in his home country, close to his family and friends, and leading a team with the potential to put Spanish Counter-Strike on the map. Objetivos para esta temporada: ganar todo las ligas españolas. Estar en MDL, no sé de qué forma, pero estar en MDL e intentar subir a Pro League. Uh, jugar el torneo de ascenso para Face It, ECS quiero decir, y, e intentar llegar al Major en el año que viene. Esos son las, los objetivos principales. But Mixwell didn't lead his all-star Spanish team to glory. He 
quite simply drifted into the shadows of a smaller scene without registering any real achievements outside of national level competition. Mixwell's gamble had backfired, and after a year, he closed that chapter of his career, motivated to return to NA for another shot at success. I left to NA for two years, then I came back. I tried to make the best Spanish team in history. I think we did a better than previous Spanish rosters, but my expectations were much higher. So I decided to step down and Cloud9 offered me a spot in this team. So I joined Cloud9 and I'm really glad I did it. In July of 2019, Mixwell found himself amongst what many would call a promising roster. This Cloud9 team boasted young up-and-comer tens and veterans of the NA scene like Automatic and Daps. But yet again, Mixwell's results didn't match the hype. Molotov actually going to be extinguished and it's left all onto Mixwell. He manages that opening pick he needs to get the quad kill to close this and he's just one kill away. Tarek going to be going for the defusal, but I think, is, is he even going to stop it? He's going to go for the knife, but doesn't quite get there. Tarek is going to be there to close out the round, being a little bit sneaky with the defusal. And that is going to be EG taking the victory, 2-0. to zero. And I think we might be done here, Samra. Unless some absolute magic is brought to the table, it will be 16-3 to three in favor of Astralis. We're getting one step closer. Mixwell and Kusa to try and save the day. They've spotted one device. They'll jump down his throat, and that's going to be it. It's all done, 16-3. to three. The final show from Astralis here. They won't be making it to the grand final. They certainly put on an admirable showing here in their final game. Dominant performance. After just five months with C9, Mixwell was benched and soon after released. After his eight year long Counter Strike career, Mixwell was back to the drawing board. And that's when an unexpected new route for success opened up, giving him the new beginning he so badly needed the rise again of Mixwell. Mixwell had run many of his Counter-Strike options dry, and after his struggles in both Europe and North America, he wasn't as desirable an addition for a Tier 1 org as he'd once been. But in early 2020, with Valorant's arrival in the FPS scene, Mixwell, like so many others, could begin anew. Within just months of the game's release, he stood head and shoulders above the majority of European players. No! Valorant, baby! One dead. One dead. Uno medio, muy tocado. Derecha, derecha. Detrás tuyo. Muerto. Muerto otro. Muerto otro. As captain of his own stack, Team Mixwell reigns supreme at Twitch Rivals Europe and the G2 Invitational in June of 2020 making the man himself a prime target for the many orgs flocking to Valorant and eager to sign talent. Offers came in from NA teams, but Mixwell remained in Europe, signing with an organization he once tried out for, unsuccessfully, in Counter-Strike. I mean, it feels amazing, man. It feels amazing. G2 is insane in terms of that. that what you said, they have so many followers and people that are really hyped. And I think it's a perfect fit for me because my fans are G2 fans as well. He was just one of those players alongside Scream that suddenly became a household name. So it really made sense that uh, Carlos and G2 were going to go to Mixwell to be the, the poster child of the team. With Mixwell as their captain, G2 ran through the competition for the second half of 2020. It got to the point where, in whatever Valorant event they attended, you could bet they'd be victorious in the end. 13-11, Mitch. G2 Esports take the final European Ignition Series event. They've been dominant across every single Ignition Series event. Finally, they have been tested. But Mixwell was the one that really took Europe by storm and was one of the main reasons why they won all of the Ignition events that they had. So when 2020 was set to end with First Strike, a tournament boasting EU's best sides, and a then very sizable $100,000 prize pool, most expected yet another G2 win. 
But that's not what happened. The last two standing bastions of hope for G2. The post plant positions are so good as well. Look at it. One tuck behind default, one backside. Nuki holding on to lane now. G2 have to go fast. Not a lot of utility. Nuki finds his fourth on the round now. Pit down in heaven. The ace from Nuki closes this out. G2 eliminated here by heretics. Heretics are the king killers, the titan slayers. They make it through to the grand finals. I got a shout out as well. Mixwell had one of the best series yes. I think I've seen him have. Yes. And that's saying a lot about a player like Mixwell. We know how much impact he can have, but wow. Pats on the back for all of those Heretics boys, for real. By the end of the year, Europe's Valorant scene was thriving. New teams were on the rise, and going into the Valorant Champions Tour in 2021, G2 were dethroned as the region's top dogs. He could be being pushed on, he knows it, even with the knife out. He, no steps, he's still expected. Artis needs to get in there and do something, though. It's already half defused. Down he goes, leaving Pith all by himself. A 1v2, but a, one, a 1v3 it was, actually. But now a 1v1. That spam connects, and that's it done. And Dustin, G2 are out as NIP are the second team in Europe to confirm their spot in Masters. As Pith takes his steps out, Boaster is biding his time. He doesn't want to peek too early and get caught off. But now as they move forward, it's his time to peek. Magnum and Boaster close it out. 13 to 11. G2 will not be making it to Masters as Fnatic move on. One game away from the Challengers finals. What an incredible series. G2 have time now to work out all of their issues, but that means that the dominant team of 2020 won't be headed to Iceland or Reykjavik or even the MEA finals when it comes to the top teams in Europe. Yeah, another devastating blow to G2. Failing to qualify for first strike was just the start, not getting masters and then moving on to this stage and failing again. I think for me that at that time, I didn't think we, were, we would qualify, to be honest. Uh, I felt in practice that we were not, not good enough. Uh, the results showed uh, before that as well. We struggled a lot in qualifiers, so we didn't deserve to be there, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. I think the downfall of like G2 in 2020 was because they were so successful, they weren't fixing some of the issues that they had and teams were starting to get closer and closer to beating them in series that it started to become more and more scary for G2, but they, because they were winning, they didn't really care. They, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It was an eerily similar arc to Mixwell's time in Counter-Strike. A spell of successes where everything seemed to be on track, only for it all to quickly begin unraveling. And much like his tenure on Optic, G2 brought in an entirely new roster, a game with Mixwell as the sole player to stay on board. But this time, history did not repeat itself. This 2v2 is going to be tight. A couple of players on low HP. He's Don't not going dare. in with a shorty. Put that down, man. You savage. He's killed him and pulled oh, out the knives to close it. What a way God. to finish. G2. Welcome to Berlin, guys. Masters 3 is theirs. They've won the series in absolutely disgraceful fashion. Vodafone Giants barely got off their feet in the last two maps. Tom, what a, what a series. Wow. Hello, everyone. And welcome to Verti Musical, the battlegrounds for our third and final VCT Masters of 2021. 15 teams from all over the globe have touched down in Berlin to battle to be crowned the best in the world and lock in a spot at Champions. Sentinels have set a trap. They're waiting for G2 to run into middle. They feed right into Sentinels hand, but nothing goes their way. Again, it's going to be the split onto the site as Nuke at the oh! back line, but it's a collab from Mixwell. He will come away with two kills and it's left to Shazam trying to hold on here. It's all up to Dapper. He's going in for the stick halfway at least, ready to take the fight up above. And Cold Dementor's shut down. He's almost got it, oh. but they push at just the right moment. 13 to 11, G2 have won the series and Sentinels are dethroned. At long last, G2, the Kings are back and this is their town. First off, Past teammates with Oscar, so I know how he is. Uh, he's a fantastic teammate, both in game, out of game. Really easy to get along with. He calms well. He's very selfless. He does like what the team needs. He's a really, really good player, and mechanically, he's skilled as well. 
don't think Athena's going to be expecting that at all. That's a look at this. Flash. The gravity well, perfect. Mix well with the flash. Beautiful little set piece there. Dig him out. And again, you know, expecting that, anticipating they're going to look to hold on to Tree with that lockdown because it's their only hope of fighting back in here. Oh, the flash again. He knows there's another 5K. is in so much trouble. Mix well. In their first international LAN event, the new roster upset the odds, handing the previously untouchable Sentinels their first LAN defeat and making it all the way to the semi-finals in Berlin. They beat F4Q, they beat Sentinels, and now G2 have taken down Crew to book themselves a spot in the semi-finals. For Mixwell, this means he's returned to the top of his eSport. It's proof that his Valorant experience doesn't need to mirror his CSGO career. And for Oscar Kenyeus, it means the best maybe yet to come.